Hi everybody! Today we're going to be talking about the parentheses shaped lacing gap in detail and that is when the bones are bowing in the back and the uh, width of the gap at the waistline is a whole lot wider than the gap at the top and the bottom of the corset. So I'm not entirely sure why I got so many questions about this in the last couple of weeks, probably close to half a dozen through my emails and uh, other social media messages. So I figured, I mean I've talked about this in the past and what you can do to fix it, you, you know, using this tutorial or that tutorial, uh, but I haven't actually talked about it in detail and put it all in one place. So this is going to be my attempt to consolidate all of that information. So today we're going to look at four different techniques that you can use, um, or what I have tried in the past, to help reduce or eliminate that bowing in the back. And I'm going to talk about uh, about seven or eight different courses that where um, I have experienced bowing in the back and what I did to resolve that. I'm also going to talk about the one corset where I have never experienced bowing in in the back and what might be different about that corset. So let's look at some old videos and also some pictures. So when the bones in the back of your corset are like this, there might be a couple of different things going on. As I mentioned in my video about the different corset gaps, this might mean that the corset is too curvy than your body is ready for. It doesn't necessarily mean that you will never be able to close that corset, but right now your waist is pushing back on the corset and providing resistance, while the ribs and the hips of the corset are being pulled inward because, you know, there's nothing pushing out on those areas. It doesn't necessarily mean that your corset wasn't theoretically made to your measurements, but your waist is not squishing down or the corset is not reinforced in the right way to prevent that bowing and allow you to close that gap. Other reasons may include uh, the grommets are set too far apart so that there's not enough of them to provide the right tension at the waistline, or the steels in the back, they might be too malleable or they might be too loose in their channels so that they're twisting or bowing, or it could be a combination of all of these. Also, the more extreme the reduction or the smaller the corset, the more likely it is that this type of bowing can occur. And if the bones are, you know, stressed too much, they could even potentially permanently kink and dig into your back. So, ouch, <laughs> you, you don't want that to happen. But why would a corsetier even consider putting flexible bones in the back of their corsets in the first place? It often comes down to comfort and posture. So remember my video uh, where I showed you how to take those really stiff steels in the back of an off-the-rack corset and and uh, actually curve them to your lumbar spine. Well, when you use flexible bones, you can completely eliminate this problem. So it can help you maintain proper posture, which is more healthy for your spine, and it can also make the corset much more comfortable so that you can wear it more frequently and for longer hours. I should also note that corsets with really bendy backbones, it's not necessarily a sign of inadequate experience on the maker's part. There are some corsets where I've extensively altered it to, you know, minimize the bowing in the back, like with my Heavenly corset and my uh, Azriel's Accomplice Curvy Girl corset. So in those situations, you know, I did really modify the construction of the corset so that it fit me better. Uh, but other really experienced makers that have been around for like 20 or 30 years, like Electra Designs and Dark Garden, in those situations, I simply modified the lacing technique to make it easier to tighten. So here's what you can do to minimize the bowing in the back, and I'm going from least invasive technique to the most invasive. So the least invasive technique would be uh, changing the lacing technique. So uh, you might have remembered my video on chevron lacing. I've also heard it called tennis shoe lacing. And like I mentioned in this lacing tutorial with the dark garden corset, it kind of creates an anchor point at each set of grommets. There's greater friction at every grommet to hold the laces in place. And if you pair this with the inverted bunny ears method at the waistline, uh, I showed you how to do inverted bunny ears a few years ago, uh, but not with the chevrons, you know, not with the two together. If you pair those two together, it will give you even more control. And like I mentioned in this lacing tutorial, you know, Starker's Corsetry uses this, Electro Designs, Dark Garden, um, they all have rather bendy bones in the back and they all use this lacing technique, so it's my belief that it's not an accident, they're using it for a specific purpose. What I've also done to make the lacing easier is to use two different sets of laces or simply cut the bunny ears at the waistline. So I have one lace uh, that controls from the waist to the top of the corset and then I have another lace that controls from the waist to the bottom of the corset. So how I do this when I'm lacing up is that I can pull and tighten each one individually. So I might tighten the top to the waist a little bit and then tie that off. And then I'll tighten from the waist to the bottom a little bit and tie that off. And then I'll untie those top laces again and I'll try to pull that tighter and tie it off again and etc. So they work together. My courses from the Bad Button, they had rather bendy bones in the back, but they came laced this way. They came with uh, two sets of laces. And I also tried this with my tighter corset and it worked great in that corset as well. 
A slightly more invasive technique, but one that still doesn't require you to have any sewing skills, is to simply add more grommets in between the pre-existing ones. Sometimes the grommets are spaced a little too far apart, especially at the waistline, and if there were more grommets closer together, it can give you more leverage. If you want to match the grommets perfectly, it might take you a little bit of trial and error. You know, you might have to contact a few different grommet sources and have them send you samples so that you can see which ones match uh, perfectly. So in my Curvy Girl corset and my Gallery Serpentine corset, I used size zero grommets using my Home Pro LR uh, press. And then for my Heavenly corset, I used size double zero grommets with my C-Step 2 press. And that one matched pretty much perfectly. I'm pretty proud of that one. So in this picture here, we can see before before and after, basically I added grommets to one half of my heavenly corset and not the other half. You can see that they're spaced pretty close together. Uh, I, they, I probably didn't need to make them that close together. I could probably have just added a few extra ones at the waistline, but I, I didn't want to take any chances. And by the way, that gap in the grommets in the uh, after shot uh, that's you know right at the waistline, that shows where the waist tape is running through. So I contemplated whether I should leave it like that or just install a grommet like right in, in the middle of the waist tape. And uh, I didn't want to compromise the strength of the waist tape, but I did notice that it was uh, anchored in using uh, the stitching of the boning channels right next to, to the grommets. So uh, I figured that would probably hold it pretty well anyway, so I did end up putting a grommet right in the middle of the waist tape. However, if your grommet has lacing bones, adding more grommets is not really possible without drilling through the bone. And I don't recommend doing that because one, it exposes the uncoated metal of the bone. Uh, the bone actually comes you know, in a white coating. And if you expose the, the raw metal, that may encourage rusting later on. Two, it also weakens the bone. And uh, you know, depending on the bit that you use, it can increase the risk of snapping the bone. Now you can get lacing bones that are uh, naturally, you know, they come very very stiff. I believe they're called fusion coated bones and you can get them at corsetmaking.com, but I really don't recommend using those because they are very stiff. So if you have any sort of sway back, it's going to be pretty uncomfortable for you and you're going to feel like you're hunching over. Uh, even if you want to preserve your natural lumbar curve, because everybody's supposed to have one, uh, I, you know, th these bones are not going to be really comfortable. So that's why I believe that Electro Designs deliberately uses the lacing bones that are not fusion coated so that it can curve to your natural posture. If you do have some sewing skills, then you have other options available to you. So one reason that the bones might be bowing like this is that they might be twisting or twirling in their channels. The boning channels themselves might be too loose for them. So if you make the boning channel smaller or tighter, it can help prevent the twisting and therefore the bowing. Now as to choosing which side of the boning channel you want to manipulate, I prefer to push the bones as close as possible toward the grommets, as opposed to you know pushing the bone away from the grommets because you want the grommets to be supported. That's the reason that the bones are there in the first place. Uh, so doing it by machine, that might be a little bit faster, but be sure to use the most narrow zipper foot you possibly can find. The feet that have like, you know, the, just the toe on one side, that's good because you can get the needle right up against the side of the bone. Uh, the standard zipper foot that comes with your domestic machines, the one that, that sort of like go out and in like a one of those Tetris shapes, um, I prefer not to use those ones because you can't quite get the needle close enough to the bone. Or what you can do is take your seam ripper and undo the binding a little bit at that back edge and slip out the bone completely. And that way you can tighten the channel with a smaller risk of breaking your needle. And then you can put the bone back in when you're done. But if you're gonna go to that level of effort, then you can use this opportunity to replace the bones with stiffer ones if you find that the original bones are really thin or flimsy. Examples where I switched out the bones would be in my Curvy Girl corset, my Gallery Serpentine corset, my Heavenly corset, and also my very first Leatherotics corset. And if you put all of these techniques together, of tightening the boning channels, changing out the bones, adding more grommets, and switching up your lacing technique, it makes for a corset with a very small chance of bowing outward at the waistline. So what's an example of a corset that absolutely never bows in the back? That would be my contour corset. So the steel bones in the back, they're not too stiff, but they are placed very closely together, enough that the large flange of the grommets literally overlap with the bones. So the washer of the grommet should never rip through because it's anchored by the bones, and the bones should never twist in their channels because they're anchored by the grommets. So they literally reinforce one another. The grommets are also a little bit closer together at the waistline and the very stiff mesh itself, you know, the fabric itself might be able to prevent the bowing because it resists collapsing, stretching, warping. I've never even seen so much as a wrinkle in this mesh. 
So there you go. Those are the techniques and solutions that I have utilized in the past to help reduce or eliminate the bowing in the back of the corset and therefore the uh, parentheses gap shape. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I hope you found this informative. If you did, please remember to click that like button wherever it is if you're on uh, like desktop or mobile. And if you have used any of these techniques yourself, let me know in a comment below. If you have used different techniques, I would be very interested to hear that as well. So feel free to leave a comment. That would be awesome. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.